How to use Deriscope to price a stock option in Excel. First select an empty cell where you want to paste the formulas. Then move to the wizard and search for the stock option type in the type selector. As soon as the type, stock option, is selected, the function selector is set to the function, create, and the grid is filled with the input parameters of that function. Simply click on Go to paste the function in the spreadsheet. The wizard created two formulas. This formula creates the stock option object. This is a simple link to the cell A8. It is formatted green as a visual reminder that it is only a link. This formula creates the payoff object. In order to price the stock option, you must select the cell A1 so that the wizard knows which object you want to price. Notice the wizard now displays the contents of the object in cell A1. Select an empty cell, where the pricing formulas should be pasted. And move over to the wizard, in order to select the price function. Click on Go, to paste the function in the spreadsheet. Done. The option price is displayed in cell D1. Let's visit the various formulas and the contents of their created objects. The black entries are the keys. The blue entries are the values. Let's change one such value. For example, change the call into put. Notice the option price in cell D1 went down. This is why it flashed red. Next try to change the payoff type. The formula in cell A8 returns error. Select the cell in order to read the info in the wizard which says that a certain key named cash is missing. What happened is that the new payoff, cash or nothing, requires the cash input to be properly defined. While you can supply it by typing it in, it is much easier to let the wizard generate the complete formula as follows. Now simply link the cell B5 to the new object in cell A15. The price for the digital option is now shown in cell D1. What about using a different model? The current model is supplied by the object in D7, which is an analytic Black Skulls model. Deriscope supports over 30 option pricing models. Let's use the wizard to create a finite differences model. First select a cell that contains the model handle so that the wizard displays that model. Next, go to the wizard to set up the desired model object. Select an empty cell. and click on Go. The finite differences model object has been created in cell G1. Now simply link the cell E4 to cell G1. The new price is shown in cell D1. What about using a different yield curve? Same procedure as with the model. Start with selecting an existing yield curve object. Then select some empty cell. And set up the desired yield curve object in the wizard. Let's create a curve out of deposits, futures and swaps. And click go to paste the formula in the spreadsheet. Done. Here are the building blocks. This block sets the deposit rates. This block sets the futures prices.
This block sets the swap rates. The last step is to link the cell D17 to the new yield curve object created in cell G15. The new price is now shown in cell D1. What about using a different volatility curve? Same procedure. Start with selecting an existing volatility curve object. This is the currently used volatility curve object that represents a flat volatility. Use the wizard to set up a volatility curve object that represents a volatility surface over maturity and strike. Then select some empty cell. And click go to paste the formula in the spreadsheet. This is the volatility surface expressed as a table. The left column contains the maturities. The top row contains the strikes. As usual, link the cell D19 to the new volatility curve object created in cell J1. Surprise! Cell D1 returned error. Dariscope rule number 1. Never panic. The usual procedure is Read the error message. You do so by selecting the cell that contains the error. The message says that the pricing has failed. Click on the word, here. Click again on the word, here. This error message is now intelligible. It comes straight from the Quantlib library and complains about the volatility variability around the strike level of 1.49105 in maturities a little over one year. My first step is to check my volatility table. The given strikes are between 90 and 100. And I am sure that the strike of my option was 100. So I am wondering where the strike level of 1.49105 comes from. Let me check my option again. Here is the block that defines the payoff of my digital option. I had thought that the strike equaled 100, but here is defined as 1. Given the spot price of 100, this strike is very unnatural and obviously relates to the error message. I therefore change it to 100. No luck. I must read the new error message. Some improvement. The failing strike level has now increased to around 37. I must check my volatility table again to see if something strange is there at around the strike level of 37. Apparently vols are extrapolated linearly. The step from volatility of 0.2 for strike equals 90 to 0.22 for strike equals 100 implies a volatility gradient that causes problems for volatility levels at around 37. The easy solution is to change the lower volatility level from 90 to 20. Indeed, now the option price can be calculated in cell D1. Check out the following videos for more information on Dariscope.